I'm gonna show you everything you need to live stream on YouTube with a DSLR or mirrorless camera. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing you need is obviously a camera and it really doesn't matter that much which camera you choose. It could be a mirrorless camera, a DSLR, a camcorder, as long as it has an HDMI output or an SDI output, you're gonna be good to go. This one uses micro HDMI. This is the Canon M50. It's very affordable. I got it used for about 400 bucks. The next thing you need to do is set up the camera. And I like to position my camera right over the top of the monitor that I'm gonna be looking at the most because I wanna be reading the live chat and everything like that and be able to just kind of glance down and look right up into the lens. That way I'm engaging with the audience the most and I'm not like looking off to the side at a monitor reading comments the whole time with the camera over here off to the side because that'd be really impersonal if I was just like, what's up everyone, welcome in. And you're just looking at the side of my face the whole time. That doesn't feel like a live stream to me. All right, so here's the camera. And as you can see, I pretty much have it positioned dead center right over the webcam itself. And then I have it on this monopod. And you could really do this a whole bunch of different ways, but I'm gonna show you how I set this up. There's a bunch of products on Amazon that make this easier, but this is the parts I had laying around to bring this all together. So this is an old Manfrotto monopod that I have and it actually has these little clamps on it. So I could raise this up as high as I need it to be. It's fully extendable and then kind of lock it into place. And the way I have it secured to the desk is first, it's going into this C-stand clamp that's clamping it down. And then the C-stand clamp is going directly into this Cardellini clamp, which is actually clamping itself to the desk. I know it's a little bit difficult to see, but I'll link the parts below and I'll link some other options on Amazon that are much more simple. On top of the monopod, I have this simple little ball head so I can get the camera positioned exactly the way that I want and get it leveled out. And on top of the ball head, I have this quick release plate. And this is just a simple Arca Swiss quick release plate. You can use whatever quick release system that you want on top. I'm just using that because my camera has an Arca Swiss plate built right into it. So it makes it really easy to just throw this on without even adding any additional plates or anything like that. Anytime you're doing live streaming, it's likely that you're gonna be live for at least an hour. So I recommend plugging your camera in, using a dummy battery, a power bank, USB-C, whatever will power your camera continuously. So I just have a dummy battery hanging here that I use with my Sony FX3. It's always ready to go. And then I also have an HDMI cable just waiting here, ready to go at all times. Now, the Canon M50 uses a micro HDMI, so I also have one of those here set up and I'll show you where this plugs into. This is where I'm gonna be plugging in the HDMI cable that comes out of my camera. Plug it in the back here. This one has four inputs. You don't really need that much unless you're doing multi-angle. I'm gonna show you some other cheaper options than this, but. We'll get to that shortly. Now that I have the camera all set up, let's take a look at how I'm doing the audio for these live streams. Obviously you could use just about any microphone that you want to. I'm using the Rode NT1A and I've been using this for about 10 years now and it's still going strong. It's a great condenser microphone, has a nice sound and I really don't need anything much more than this. Comes with the shock mount and the pop filter and then the microphone is attached here to the Rode PSA1 swivel mount arm. And this thing is really solid. It's great because you can just leave the microphone wherever you want. You don't have to worry about it drooping. If you get some of the cheaper ones on Amazon, they're much more rickety. This one is super solid and you can position it at the exact spot that you want and know that it is going to stay there. So I highly recommend it. At the time of filming, I think it's about 99 bucks. I'll show you how this mounts to the desk back here. It's just with a simple clamp mount underneath there is a little clamp. Here you go, there's the underside of the clamp. It's just really simple way to get it clamped onto the desk. Running out of the microphone is a full size XLR and it runs down and into this audio box USB. Basically this is an audio interface that plugs into your computer via USB and it allows you to plug in up to two XLRs. So I could do two microphones if I want to. You don't have to get this exact one. There are a ton of different options out there. The Scarlett is another really popular option. And the nice thing about this is it does have a plus 48 volts. So I can add phantom power because this microphone requires that. And here I can control the exact gain of the microphone, make sure it isn't clipping 
and I have headphone volume control. And what I do is actually plug my headphones directly into this interface so that I can hear this microphone. Now you don't have to use a microphone setup exactly like this. If you want to save money, you could buy a USB microphone. There are a bunch of great ones out there from companies like Blue Yeti, Sure and Rode all make USB microphones that have a pretty nice sound and you can skip the audio interface completely and save the money if you want to. Now let's take a look at the video switcher I'm using. Again, this is the Atom Mini Pro. It allows up to four HDMI inputs. So you could do four different camera angles or you know, a laptop input for you know another screen or something. This piece of equipment is absolute overkill if you're only gonna be using one camera angle. I really don't recommend it. You can save your money and spend it elsewhere if you don't need all of these different inputs and options. I mean, there's things built into this like doing, you know, cuts between angles, auto fades, fade to black, and a bunch of other things. You can do things like picture in picture. So if you have multiple angles or maybe you're gaming and you wanna show yourself and the game footage, you can do all of that here. You can also record with the mini pro version. So you could hook up a little SSD drive and then when you're done streaming, you could pull it out and do all of your editing, say of your live stream if you want to even. The A10 Mini is $500. So if you don't need multi-angle or all those extra features, just save your money and use it on lighting or something else. Like I said though, there are so many other cheaper options for getting the HDMI feed out of your camera and into your computer. My number one cheapest option that is still great quality is the Elgato CamLink 4K. It's just a simple USB 3.0 input and then it has an HDMI input. That's it, it's extremely simple. The next option is the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Recorder 3G. And the nice thing about this is that it has HDMI and SDI input available. So if you're using a higher end camera that uses SDI, this is a nice option to have and it's only about $120. Now let's take a look at the lighting I'm using. Typically I just use one light inside of a softbox to help of course soften it up and then I have a little grid on there to keep it from spilling all over the room and adding extra light that I don't need. Now this one that I'm using is the Falcon Eyes R12 TDX. And I've actually done a full review of this. Now let's talk about how I have this light mounted and why I have it positioned where I do. I didn't want the light directly over the camera here because it would make a very flat lighting. So I have it off at a 45 degree angle here to provide a little bit of shadow and shape. And the way that I have it mounted here is on this Manfrotto wall spreader. And it's actually going between the ceiling and the floor. And I'm doing this because I have limited space. If you have more space than me, you could simply throw this onto something like a cheap Amazon light stand. These are like 10 or 15 bucks. So if you have space behind your desk, just throw it on one of these. It's very simple, cheap, easy solution. But if you're working with a limited space like I am, something like this does the trick perfectly because what I've done is I'm using another clamp here. It's a Manfrotto Mafer clamp that's just clamping right onto the pole and then the light is attached to it by the baby pin connection. So that way the light is mounted there in a nice, really compact way. If you don't wanna use a light like this, you can of course go with something very simple like a ring light or you know just any light inside of a soft box or put it through some diffusion so that your image looks a little bit better. All right, now that we have the hardware all set up, let's jump onto the computer and I'll show you the software you can use completely free, your YouTube settings and everything like that. So the first thing you need to do is download OBS. So just go to obsproject.com and they have it available for Windows or Mac and Linux as well. So for me, I just download Mac. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and unzip it and begin the installation process. Now for me, I've actually already installed OBS on my computer. It's very simple to do. Just follow the prompts on the screen to get it installed. Inside of OBS, I already have some stuff set up here, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So you just click on this plus sign, go to video capture device, and then I'm going to do add existing because I've already done it, but you could do create new and give it a name. And this is showing up right now, the Atom Mini Pro, because it's plugged in. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, and hit okay. Now I can see it here and you can see that on the screen, my camera has popped in. So it's getting onto the computer and you can use these little handles on the side of the red to reframe it however you want to. I'm just gonna leave mine full screen and then just click off to the side and it'll get out of that framing area. Now we also need to add the microphone to OBS. So again, you hit that plus sign 
and then I'm going to do audio input capture. So if it's the first time setting it up, you're gonna see the option for your audio box USB there. Um, but I've already set it up, so I'm gonna hit add existing and it's my audio box mic. If you're using a USB mic or whatever it is, you're gonna see it in the list once it's plugged in. It'll be recognized by OBS. So hit okay. And if your microphone is too loud or too quiet, you can actually change it right here with this little slider. You can see the decibels here. Now I'm gonna show you the stream settings you need to connect OBS to YouTube. The first thing you wanna do is of course, pull up your YouTube. I've got mine here, click on this and then hit go live. And then you wanna hit stream in the top left. And don't freak out, you're not gonna start going live right away um, because you still have to set it up inside of OBS. So what you need is your stream key, which you can see here is hidden. Um, you just hit copy and that's all you need from YouTube to get set up. Then you're gonna jump back into OBS here and you're gonna click on settings and then click on stream on the left-hand side. And for service, you're gonna put YouTube RTM PS, and then you want to use stream key. And that's where you will go ahead and paste in that stream key you just got from YouTube. Then once you're done, you just hit okay, and it will be ready to start streaming to YouTube. So to get started streaming on YouTube, you hit start streaming here and it'll begin to show up on YouTube. It actually won't go live yet. You will see your video feed preview show up here. And once it does, you'll get a little button up here in the top right that says go live. You click on that and boom, you're live. You're ready to talk to your audience on YouTube. Going live on YouTube really doesn't take that much. You probably already own a lot of the gear you need to go live. And luckily the software OBS is completely free to use. So get out there, set up your live streams, and I guess I'll catch you in your next live stream. All right. See you later.